I don't care what religion the genocidal child murderers are. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Unfucking believable. It is unfucking believable that it is 2024 and the US sponsored incineration of Gaza is still going on. They're just looking us dead in the eye and doing the worst things humans could possibly do right in front of us, against all laws, against all opposition. The other day, Tony Blinken posted an astonishingly obnoxious tweet, fretting about how this has been an extraordinarily dangerous year for press around the world, as though his own administration had not directly facilitated the lion's share of the deadly attacks on journalists in 2023. The utter gall of these freaks still surprises me sometimes. Very frightened and upset by the alarming increase in anti-Semitism we've seen in the last three months. Anti-Semitism meaning pro-Palestine demonstrations, pro-Palestine political slogans, pro-Palestine tweets and TikTok videos, criticism of the Israeli government, and people saying it's wrong to murder thousands of children. All this anti-Semitism gibberish is so fucking stupid. It's like if every time we wanted to criticize the Iraq invasion, we had to do a whole big song and dance, swearing on our lives that we weren't racist toward Texans. I don't give a fuck if you're Jewish. I don't care what religion you are. If you're murdering thousands of children, the very least significant thing about that situation is what religion you happen to be. I think the overwhelming majority of people on my side see it this way. Actually, what fuels anti-Semitism is murdering children by the thousands under the banner of the Star of David while adamantly insisting that your actions are inseparable from all Jews and the totality of Judaism. John Bolton has a new article out titled, The West May Now Have No Option But to Attack Iran. It's actually almost cute at this point. He just keeps making up excuses to get the one thing he desperately wants. Like, "Uh uh-oh, looks like we'll have to do that thing I've always wanted to do. He's like a cartoon breakfast cereal mascot, always making new schemes to grab a bowl. Step 1. Deliberately make Gaza uninhabitable. Step 2. Leave Gazans no choice but to migrate elsewhere. Step 3. Call this forced migration voluntary and humanitarian. Step four, turn the entire Gaza Strip into a giant Israeli settlement. Don't worry, Israel will be at peace once it defeats Hamas. Well, first it'll need to conquer Syria, eliminate Hezbollah and Ansar Allah, achieve regime change in Iran, and defeat all the new enemies these military campaigns will create along the way. But then there will be peace. There's a tweet by a guy named 12ball. The Nova Festival survivors are suing the Israeli government for negligence since the IDF obviously had ample time and ample reason to cancel the festival, but instead forced its approval and failed to station any IDF soldiers at all to guard it. Comment by Caitlin. It's crazy how there's mountains of evidence that Israeli higher-ups allowed October 7th to happen in order to advance ethnic cleansing agendas in Gaza, but you'll never be allowed to say this blatantly obvious thing happened without being branded an anti-Semitic conspiracy kook. It is right and good to aggressively scrutinize claims about mass rape on October 7th, But it's also important to stress that even if every single one of those claims was true, it would not justify anything Israel has been doing in Gaza. No matter how many times you bleat the phrase, blame Hamas, it will never magically erase Iran's guilt in raining military explosives on a giant concentration camp full of children. No matter how many times you accuse Israel's critics of being anti-Semitic, it will never magically erase Israel's guilt in raining military explosives on a giant concentration camp full of children. No matter how many times you mention October 7th, 
It will never magically erase Israel's guilt in raining military explosives on a giant concentration camp full of children. Older Generations For the love of God, stop telling young children it's terrible, but that's just the way it is. This may have been true in our youth, but our children are networked in an unprecedented way which has already resulted in massive social changes. They change the way we think about gender pretty much overnight. You think a tiny old war machine is going to get in their way? Stop trying to indoctrinate them with your learned helplessness. Next time a young person gets angry about the way the world is, please don't chuck the sand of preemptive disappointment in their eyes with your somnolent words of status quo enforcing pragmatism. Simply say, I am with you all the way. Tell me where to next.